Hey guys, as you know, streaming has been a really big deal in 2020. So today I thought I'd run you through the equipment that I use when I live stream. I'm no expert in streaming, but I want to come from the angle that if I can do this, anyone can do this. All this requires is a bit of thought, some careful planning and adding the right equipment at the right time to enhance your streaming. Over the last year, I've gradually been making some changes to my YouTube channel. I've loved getting to know some of you through the comments and I'm grateful for every single person who has subscribed. And if you haven't done already, please do take a moment to subscribe to this channel. One thing I regret about streaming is not buying all the equipment that I needed at once. Instead I incrementally added bits of equipment to my streaming setup. I found that when I did add a good bit of equipment my stream quality shot up and people commented and appreciated what I was doing much more. So today I'm going to give you a general overview of the equipment that I use and why I think you should choose these things when you start streaming. Of course this is not an in-depth review of each item it's more of an overview to give you an idea what you need to get started. I've made sure to link every single product below so do check the links. Firstly, the camera. Without doubt, you need a decent camera and I use the Canon EOS 750D DSLR camera. At the time, I spent a little bit more money on this camera simply because it had a flip screen. Now, I know there's a lot of different DSLR cameras that you can use, but for me, I love this camera. I've had it for three years now. It's very sturdy, stable, and has lasted many trips across the UK, mainland Europe, and even as far as New Zealand. So I know I can rely on it. It also comes with a lens. Now, I would look to upgrade my lens to a wide angle lens at some point, but the lens is okay for starting out. Or you need to do is zoom out as far as possible to get the best quality for your footage. And while I realise I haven't got to grips with all of the camera, it's been a great addition to my setup. Please note, I didn't buy this camera for streaming initially, I bought it for vlogs and for photography. The main idea was to use it while I was on tour and to capture what I was doing behind the scene. However, it's been a great camera to use for streaming as well. And if you're taking this really, really seriously, I would recommend this camera. The second bit of equipment that I use is a CamLink converter. This small gadget allows you to connect your camera to your laptop to be able to stream using a DSLR camera or something similar. With an HDMI cable mini on one side so that you can connect one side to your camera and the other side to your CamLink, it costs about £125. It is a little bit of an investment but it makes a huge difference in the overall visual quality of your streams. I've only just started using this on my Twitch platform but I'm really looking forward to using it on YouTube as well where I can do live vlogs and question and answer sessions. Microphones. When I initially started streaming, I actually didn't have a microphone at all. I just used the mic in my laptop. And while it's also okay at the very, very beginning, it was something I realized I needed to change really, really quickly. For a long time, I wanted to buy this particular mic that I'm gonna recommend. It's a little bit more expensive than your average mic, but it's because I need to use this as a musician as well. It's not just for streaming or podcasts. The Shure SM7B mic is just over 300 pounds, and it is an amazing piece of equipment. So many artists use this in their live videos when they're recording in a studio setting with maybe a crowd around them as well. It's a fantastic mic, it's durable, long-lasting and has many amazing features. Here are some of the key pointers. The polar pattern is cardioid, the frequency range is 50 to 20,000 hertz, it also has a bass roll-off switch and a mid-boost switch, the impedance is 150 ohms and it has great shielding against electromagnetic interference. You can read the full description in the link below where I take you to Toman, one of the best retailers for studio equipment. However, I'm aware that not all streamers want to spend that amount of money on a microphone, so here are two other options for you. Option number one, if you're a singer or an artist like me, you might want to use something like the Shure SM58. It is the bog standard mic that all artists seem to use when they're starting out. It's sturdy. I've got one that I've used for well over 10 years and it's still going strong. So you may want to consider using something like that straight into your audio interface. The other option, if you're looking at more of a podcast style stream, is the Mano Fairy microphone. I did a review of this earlier this year, so you can check it out below as well. This mic is great for podcasts. It gives you great control and I've been really impressed with the audio quality and it's retailing for around 60 pounds. Both these mics are great, they just have different purposes, so consider buying one of these instead if you don't want to fork out money for the Shure SMB. Then of course you'll need a mic stand for your microphone. I use a clamp stand that clamps to your desk instead of a traditional mic stand. I find this is great for sitting down or standing up. The angles are fantastic on the arm and it's really solid and durable, holding up your mic without any problems at all. I've added a link for one of these below as well. 
If you're using a microphone that requires an XLR lead, like the SM7B or the SM58, then you will need to buy an audio interface. If you're a musician and you're recording from home, then you'll probably already have one of these. But if not, there's a variety of sizes. I would personally recommend the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6 third generation USB audio interface. Now I have the earlier model, the second generation model, which has served me perfectly. I use it on tour when I'm running tracks through my laptop and I use it at home when I'm recording bits and pieces in my little studio. However, the third generation is even better with six balanced line inputs plus high performance converters. I would certainly be buying one of these if I didn't have an earlier model already. Of course, you'll need a jack cable or an XLR lead depending what you're plugging into the audio interface. I'll generally be plugging my guitar into one input and my mic into the next. I also use a mini mixer if I'm using a third instrument so that I can put instruments through one side and vocal through the other. Headphones. Of course, there's a wide range of headphones, but I'm going to talk about what I personally like to use. I've chosen the Beodynamic DT770 Pro Studio Headphones. I love these for their sound quality, and as you know, not all headphones are comfortable on your ears over a long period of time. For me, when I'm listening to music or streaming for a long period of time, over an hour, wearing headphones can become tiring, but these headphones are incredibly comfortable, and I do not feel this kind of ache around my ears after an hour's use. For these headphones, you're looking at about £110 to £115, depending where you buy it. I put an Amazon link down below for you guys. The tripod. I bought this pretty soon after the camera because I realized I couldn't hold it like this for too long. So while I spent a bit of money on the camera itself, I decided to go super cheap with the tripod because I realized that you can get into hundreds and hundreds of pounds and although that's amazing, it's not really what I needed. I needed something that was small, compact, that I could put on a carry-on luggage in a plane that was super light. So I didn't mind that it was basic at all. I used the iGadgets 150 centimeter extendable two-in-one combined aluminium travel tripod. Wow, that's a mouthful. This tripod is all that you need for a basic setup. And while I know it hasn't got all the amazing features or the durability that some others have, it's been perfectly fine for me. I vlog once a week and it's lasted me for three years without any major problems at all. The best feature of this product is it also has an extendable pole that comes out that you can unravel from within. You can pull it out from the top and extend it. And so you can take footage with that pole, holding it as still as you want or moving it around. You can buy this or similar products for around 40 pounds. I have linked down below a similar product to this because at the time of recording this, it wasn't available on Amazon. So go check out the link for a similar product, which might even be a tiny bit better than what I've got. Lighting. This is something I wish I spent money on way back when I started vlogging. This has made the biggest difference for me. Again, probably the cheapest way to go about this is buying a pair of softbox lights. I use the Mount Dog Softbox Lighting Photo Studio Kit, but there's other similar brands like the Abe Studio 2x135 Watt Continuous Lighting Kit as well, which can be seen in the link below. What I like about this kit, everything is included, including a spare light, the stands, the softbox themselves and the light all in one super easy to set up takes five minutes and the difference it makes in your videos is immense of course as your channel grows you can invest more in more expensive lighting but this is enough for me for now And finally, there are a few other things that you may wish to consider as you go along your streaming journey. When I started out, I certainly didn't use this, but Streamlabs have been particularly helpful for me when I stream on Twitch. Now, I love Streamlabs because it gives me the option for different scenes, gives me the ability to see everything on one screen, comment back to people, put up different screens, change the audio settings, whatever it might be. It's a great platform, and although it takes a little while to get used to it and to program in exactly what you want for your settings, gamers love it, and I know that other musicians use it as well. Once you're more confident with streaming live, you may wish to use Streamlabs. This may seem really basic but I found that my streaming has suffered when I've used Wi-Fi and so after a bit of advice from one of my friends I now connect straight to the internet source. This has helped tremendously with the stability of my stream so if you are streaming longer term consider plugging in with an Ethernet cable and a USB converter into your laptop. I really hope this video has helped you if you are thinking about starting out streaming or you've been streaming for a little while and you want to upgrade some of your equipment. These bits of equipment have served me really well, particularly as I've increased my streaming to up to three times a week. Really grateful I've made the investment and I know that the quality has improved because of it. Of course, you may have other ideas of other bits of equipment that you would recommend, so leave comments below if you suggest something different. And I'd love to hear about your journey as well, what you've been streaming and how you've been finding it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done already, like the video 
and consider joining me on Patreon from as little as $3 a month. You can get involved with my Patreon community. This includes free music every month that is not available to the general public, a private Facebook group that I add to regularly with updates and things that again are not available to the public, and monthly private vlogs. There are lots of other options as well but that is a great starting point. So if you like my music or you like me or both even better then do consider joining me on Patreon. Thanks again guys for watching, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you soon.